So do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. I've already tried that. But all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. No way, that's too risky. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Sumeru! We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Hmm... Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm, that does sound like it could work. Oh, before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now! Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the Subzero's festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sataria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the academia and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light a part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. 
From the sound of it, Satari is just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sataria will take a day off from the Academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. <laughs> 